Il suono è senz'altro una parte fondamentale dell'esperienza cinematografica, ma molto spesso viene considerato molto meno di quanto non lo siano invece le immagini. Secondo alcuni registi come David Lynch o Denis Villeneuve, di cui parleremo in questo video, il suono è addirittura più importante delle immagini, riesce molto più delle immagini a restituire determinate sensazioni allo spettatore. Ora, se parliamo di un film ambientato nel mondo reale, questo risulta abbastanza semplice, ma come funziona invece per i film di fantascienza? Come si crea un suono per qualcosa che non esiste? Immaginate di essere il sound designer di Denis Villeneuve, Mark Mangini, e di dover plasmare il suono per gli ornitotteri, quelle strane libellule meccaniche di Dune. Il suono di un reale elicottero sembra il punto più logico da cui partire. We, we were desperate not to have the audience feel like it sounded like a helicopter. Those were the early experiments we played with, but everything that landed on the picture felt like it was a helicopter, so we needed to kind of divorce ourselves from believable or realistic technology and, and go in another direction. Quindi con un sintetizzatore a disposizione tutto sarebbe abbastanza semplice. Ma cosa succede se il regista decide di usare solamente suoni reali, suoni organici per il suo film? All of them were made, believe it or not, out of traditional organic acoustic sounds. We used very very little electronic or synthetic sound in this film out of 3500 bespoke sounds that we made. Only three or four were made with synthesizers. Part of Denis's pitch to us was that he wanted Dune to sound like a documentary. As if we had landed on Arrakis with a boom pole and a recorder and everything you heard would sound like or feel like what you'd expect it to sound like. Quindi ora qualunque sia il suono che decidiate di creare, per farlo dovrete usare solamente suoni reali. How did Pablo Picasso find a way to make a portrait out of squares and circles? Those abstract impressionists found ways to create art with objects that weren't what they were trying to express, but found a way to mold them to do just that. Sound designers, we think in ab abstract ways and our brains have been trained over the years to find abstractions of what we want and, and, and create associations. This is how our sound designer brains think. Mark Mangini ha lavorato anche in Blade Runner 2049 e Mad Max Fury Road, due film estremamente caratterizzati dal sonoro. Come avevo accennato prima, la sua ultima creazione più soddisfacente è stata proprio quella degli ornitotteri. The really the operative sounds that we built the ornithopters out of for their certainly their propulsion system are cat purrs but we had this idea that cat purring had that fluttering sound and we were desperate to create a fluttering because it's wings it's not a rotor yeah we also recorded a live beetle and captured its fluttering wings and the real meat of the flapping is the sound of a canvas strap of a tent in a in a hundred mile an hour wind so it's going and then it was a process of manipulating that very steady state sound so that it could accelerate decelerate pass by with doppler shift and uh, and cruise at altitude il sound design quindi non contribuisce solamente a restituire col sonoro quello che vediamo tramite immagini, ma se fatto bene riesce a trasportarci direttamente nel mondo filmico in cui abbiamo deciso di entrare. E a volte è persino la sua assenza che può farci percepire come il suono sia inseparabile da quello che stiamo vivendo tramite immagini. I film migliori infatti sono quelli dove sonoro e immagini non si sovrastano a vicenda, ma al contrario si mescolano l'un l'altro creando un unicum che riesce ad espandere la qualità della nostra esperienza. Often sound in an instant can say something about a character, a situation, a scene, have dramatic import in ways that exposition is 
less efficient with. Ma questo non accade solamente con suoni preponderanti come gli ornitotteri, accade anche con suoni di background come il traffico cittadino. Ora, se stai girando un film ambientato a Roma è facilissimo, o giri direttamente in location, oppure giri in studio, ma vai in location a registrare l'audio del traffico. Ma ancora una volta, cosa succede quando devi ambientare una storia in un mondo che non esiste? We knew from the script the lower class lived on the lower floors and as you moved up in height you had to spend more money to live higher and higher and higher above those of lesser means below you so when you start out in the the bottom floor of that building the atmospheric sounds are are very cacophonous there's adverts blaring at you commercials and horns honking and the equivalent of futuristic traffic like you would hear in any big city. But by the time you get to the top floor, you are not hearing any of that cacophony. And in fact, you are being importuned by these very languid, soft-spoken Korean adverts beckoning you to some like spa or something, something that would be expensive and reassuring and, and peaceful. And, and everything in between. And Kay, who lives somewhere above the ground floor but below the upper floor, had something in the middle where you heard a small amount of city-like futuristic traffic flying by through a muted window. We built a universe with sound that has an internal logic to it that we try to stick to to help Um, further the story ideas. Yeah. Nei film di Denis Villeneuve, colonna sonora e suoni ambientali non si sovrastano, ma si mescolano e si confondono a vicenda, rendendo a volte perfino impossibile dire dove finisca una e dove inizino gli altri. Mark Mangini ha spiegato che questo aspetto non è assolutamente casuale, ma anzi è frutto dell'attenzione maniacale che Denis Villeneuve dedica a ogni parte del lavoro del sonoro di un film. He empowers the sound designers to think musically and he empowers the composer to think sonically. But you can't do that willy-nilly. Yeah. You can't just send everybody off on their own and do everything for everything. There has to be a direction to it, and this is where a, you know, a brilliant director like Denis or a George Miller, there's a, a number of directors thinking very intelligently like this, know how to orchestrate that so it has its um, greatest effect when you get to the final mix. In questa scena di Blade Runner 2049, la colonna sonora e i rumori si fondono in un connubio perfetto e si può addirittura intuire quanto facilmente sarebbe potuto diventare tutto un casino incomprensibile. Invece qui è tutto perfetto. Can we make it? We're too low! Take us back! There aren't very many moments on his films where we're recording the sound at the very end in the final mix and he says i don't like that rumbly thing. I don't like that screechy thing. It, it, with most other filmmakers, you'd get to that, that sequence with the spinner crashed on, the, on the, the seawall and waves and Hans Zimmer and all of that. <laughs> and you would have been digging out of that for weeks, trying to figure out what's my point of view? What do I want to hear here? When Denis Villeneuve sits at a final mix and we're combining dialogue, music and effects, we've pretty much road mapped how that's all going to work long before that. Denis likes to say that by the time he gets to his final mix, all the work that I've done, the sound design, have become what he calls old friends. Denis heard all the sounds, he's heard the score with the composer, and now he's very gently conducting to guide us through it. Erroneamente si potrebbe pensare che montaggio audio e montaggio video siano due lavori distinti e separati, ma non è così. Villeneuve è uno di quei registi che riesce a far funzionare perfettamente video e audio, ma a partire dalla produzione, così che nel processo creativo a volte possono essere addirittura i suoni ad influenzare le immagini e non viceversa. La tradizione è stata che conceptualizzi un shot, il worm va a breach il deserto qui, e va a attraversare qui, e poi va a andare a scendere nel sangue lì, e aspetteremo sei mesi per quel shot. We don't do any work on that until we finally see some mock-up of the worm do this action. Well, Denis and Joe recognize that sometimes the sound itself, if we build it before the shot is realized, can inform the way the graphic artists actually animate what we're going to see on screen. And we did that a great deal in Dune, and, and, it, and it becomes this very organic process. Everything that I heard sounded exactly the way it should sound. 
One of the reasons that that happens is that because all of that is happening organically and symbiotically in ways that are very non-traditional. Sound design usually is something that happens after the edit is done, the visual effects are done, often the score is even done, and we don't have any input into how all of that happened. Denis does this a very different way. Siamo arrivati alla fine di questo video e spero che vi sia piaciuto, se così dovesse essere mettete like al video e iscrivetevi al canale. Vi lascio qui sotto il link del canale da cui ho preso l'intervista al sound designer, ho preso l'intervista e l'ho sottotitolata e tradotta, ma vi lascio il link originale del video qui sotto. E niente, noi ci vediamo alla prossima.